How are you? <laughs> Friday. I'm happy. Why I, are you happy? I just had a big feed. Oh, nice. You what know? do you have? Friday. Some fish and chips. <laughs> That's you know? like the perfect Friday meal. Yeah, yeah, la lazy Friday meals. I'm, I'm good to go. Let's have a chat. Boom, mate. boom. What's happening? What, what do we got here? We got a couple of different yeah, things going some, on. Yeah, some today. different bits and pieces. This is probably the largest thing we've had on the desk, other than a drum kit. That's not I don't a drum know. kit. Have you been on the desk? Mate, if I sat on this <laughs> desk, it would fall apart. You know, not a lot of jobs offer that. And I'm certainly learning a lot. So today we are going to be talking about everything monitor mix. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, we're going to talk about the different types. We're going to talk about what the priority is as far as what you should be able to hear in your ears. Yep. Um, and how important that is. And basically how to set yourself up. Yeah. So this all started. Well, um, it's both for studio and life. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, 100%. Yeah. 100% studio and life. This all started um, earlier in the week. Yeah. I was teaching some kiddies at yes, school. That's right. You these told me these guys cool. are like 16. Yep. And um, they're good musicians. Yeah. You know? Um, they got their first gig. They went and played the gig. And I said, how'd it go? And they're like, it was awesome. We had heaps of fun. Um, and I got to talk to them about the sound and that yep. sort of stuff. And they said, yeah, we weren't really sure what to do. Uh, the sound guy said, how you going? You all good? And, and they went, what they say? Uh, yeah. A and then the sound guy goes, D does it sound good? And they're like, yeah. And, and then they, 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 they said to me, they didn't think it was the monitor. No, no, they were saying, but we're on stage. We can't hear what the front of house sounds like. I didn't understand why he was asking me that question. Yeah. So, um, I had a chat <clears> to <throat> them about how important it is to get yeah, what you can right. hear. Hundred percent. Correct. Yeah. Have you ever had those conversations before? Yes, hundred percent. Like, um, I've actually had the similar conversation on the other end of the spectrum, where you know, because I work a lot more in the industry with ears yeah. um, than I do with live fallback. Um, even live and you know we have talked to people and they're like oh I can't hear anything it's yeah. or, or, or I can hear everything but it's just it's overwhelming and then you, right. you switch to their patch and you listen you go oh you got everything going on in there I, I feel like it's a real gap sometimes in just general knowledge with musos yeah so, so let's start from the beginning right from Let, let's the say you're on the stage the beginning the beginning in the beginning yeah yeah that one that one Let's say you're on stage yep. and you have a sound guy who's managing stuff for you. Yes. Right? You are going to have, most likely, if it's a big enough event, one of two things. Either you'll have fallbacks yep. or you'll have in-ears. Yep. Now, fallbacks-wise, uh, just here we have a, a little EV. This is a little one. Like, yeah, it's as a drummer, this is not, not what, big we, enough. what we'd be using. No. For for standard gigs where you're playing shows and that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, you need something a little This is bigger. just to represent the yes. uh, Big Brothers. But that's, it fits on our desk. That's right. <laughs> it doesn't take up the whole desk. So, yeah, normally we'd be looking at a, a 12 or a 15. Yeah, so as a drummer, if I was using a single wedge, I'd want a horn and 15-inch driver mm -hmm. just because it can carry the kick with everything that's going on. Yeah. Or I'd want a 15 or an 18-inch sub with a horn and 12 or a horn and 15. Yeah. If I could have the sub, I'd prefer the sub over... That's right. Because when you're working with box. fallbacks, you have to remember you don't have in-ears in covering stuff up, so you'd fight in against the noise of the kit and everything that's right. as well. So. Well, then it, it changes the yeah. whole yeah, that's surrounding right. scenario that you're in. So Running yeah. fallbacks and, and picking your fallbacks to take to gigs is another whole conversation that we're not really going to touch on here. We're just going to sort of cover it. Yeah. You know? um, I, I, I prefer in-ears, just really quickly. Yeah, just well, for, that's what I was going to ask. Which, I, which do you prefer? I prefer it because I can still get a really clean mix in my ears. Everything isn't too loud. And uh, just <laughs> the other side of it is when the guitarist or the vocalist or whatever, they hit their chord, it's right here. Yep. I'm not hearing a spill or a muddy sound from using fallbacks. Even if you, if these are uh, as good as they can get, after a long time, your ears can get quite fatigued yeah. after hearing loud sounds for a long time. Yeah, so, but that's what I was going to say. I, I like in-ears for all those reasons, Yeah. but the biggest one for me is looking after you, your, your hearing. hearing. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Especially for kit, you yeah. know, like this is general for everybody, bass players, guitarists, whatever, but looking after your ears, you can't really go past in-ear mixes at the moment. Now, no. the prices for this gear have like dropped substantially. This has become industry standard yeah. just because it's available <laughs> now. Yeah. Um, so on the bench here, we've got a little Ashton kit. Uh, these weren't expensive at all. Well, this is like your cheaper end of the yeah, spectrum. Yeah, if you were just starting out, this is something you might pick up. It's great. Um, I know John and I both work with the Sennheiser, Sennheiser the e I IEM? The IEM systems. The yeah, e, yeah uh, G4s. G, G4s. I'll put them on the screen. Yeah. Now, you're looking at a $1,200 starting yeah. price for them. But the sound is... That's right. 
the, the, it, it's definitely <coughs> worth it. And yeah. when you get down to it, you'd probably spend a thousand bucks on a fallback speaker if you're buying one that's anyway. Right. So, um, so that's, to do it the right way is actually really beneficial. That's right. The, the Sennheiser is the best one, like just coming from a drummer's point of view. I know you play bass guitar yeah. as well. Um, but as a drummer's point of view, the Sennheiser is the best wireless system yes. for getting the kick drum in the bottom end that's transparent through the wireless system. Yeah. Um, a lot of the time before using the Sennheiser, I actually preferred a wired system. Well, so That's what I was going to say next. Like, This isn't barrier to, en to entry though. No. I mean, most people will have a mix plug in somewhere on stage. Yes. And you could go cabled. Ah, I, I love having a little mixer next to me. Yeah. Coming out of the headphone port there. I've got volume control just as you would have with a, a wireless belt pack. Um, but the thing that I find is like frequency, there's no loss in frequency whatsoever. Yeah. Um, and it's just because it's hardwired to the, the unit. The, the one thing I do like about the wireless versus the, um, the hardwire is you get all your limited protection. Um, so you're actually protected much more with a uh, uh, a, wireless a wireless system compared to a hardwired system unless yeah. you've got all that in play which most digital mixers do but you know still the wireless it's not always that way depending I've on had it you. before where I've been on gigs I've been wired other people have got it's gone bam and I've gone oh yeah. everyone else is like what what happened I'm like oh yeah all your limited protection just kicked in not yeah. mine yeah um but anyway let's, let's talk yeah, about let's stop talking about gear and maybe yeah. get into the the finer thing so yeah when um, you get to the gig, you're yeah. all set up, you're ready to get started. Yeah. What is the first thing that you set up in your fallback or your in-ear mix? Okay. So I'm just coming purely from a drum kit perspective at this stage. Mm -hmm. um, naturally, I want in my fallback, whether I'm using in-ears or here, uh, I want my kick drum, I want my snare drum and my overheads. Yeah. I'm not so worried about having all my close mic toms in there, my hi-hats and all that stuff. Yeah. I know, sometimes I don't even go the snare drum in there. I just go kick and overheads. You get all that through spill. That's right. Yeah. yeah. But I, I want to hear my drums. But yeah. first of all, I want to hear the kick drum. Usually the overheads are, <clears throat> are tuned quite well that I can hear the snare drum through it. Uh, yeah. So I've got my instrument up in my mix. Uh, That's then, it. That's exactly what I was going to say. You beat me to it, mate. Okay, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, don't, don't apologize. It means that, like, I'm actually right and you're actually... It's, we're doing good. Yeah, we're hey. doing good. So, uh, I was going to say, number one, yeah. whether you're playing guitar, piano, bass, vocals, whatever, you have to be able to hear yourself. Yeah. You know? Um, and that's over any spill or anything else. Um, I, I like the kick overhead. But yeah. That's normally what I'd do as well. There's no point running your entire close mic through your headset. You just don't really no. need it. And... As you add other instruments, it can muddy up everything else yep. as well. So once you get like, you get your, your kit sorted first. Yep. Um, then you add in your other instrumentation. So as a, as a drum kit player, my next instrument that I would add into my fallback is a bass player. Okay. Um, if you've got a bass player on stage or key synth bass player, whatever you've got yep. going, as close to a bass player, that is the next person I have pretty solid yep. in there. Because we want to lock in with the kick, drum. kick yeah. drum and bass. That's it. And, and I've worked with so many bass players, they're all about... You know, they have their instrument up and they, they might not even have the rest of the drum kit in there, but they're I need the kick, I need the kick, or they yep. might just have kick and snare. And it's just that time to lock into. Um, but anyways, going on from there, um, I want uh, the melodic instrument, so a guitar. I Sometimes if there's piano, guitar and everything, I'll have the one that's the main melodic instrument up. So yep. if it's guitar, it's up. If it's keyboard, it's up. And if there's any supporting roles like synths and all that, they're in the background, but they're quite low because yeah. generally it's, I'm getting spilled from there, stage. It's there, but it's not a priority. No. Yeah. Yeah. And then other than that, I need to have the lead singer in my piece. Yes. I, I'm not worried about the harm, uh, the vocalist harmonies unless I'm doing harmonies uh, from the drum kit. So, you know, uh, the vocalist is the most important thing because yeah. you need to be able to hear what's, that, where we're going. That's right. And, and they can cue exactly where we're going. Yeah. The song or... That's or, it. Yeah. It's just... Has now, to be. aside from all that, if we're running an MD on stage... Yeah. It goes MD and then everything else underneath there. Yeah. Because if there's a call that needs to be made, That's I right. want to hear where we're going and what's yeah. happening. Yeah. I don't want to have like this great killer instrument mix and then they go, all right, we're going to the chorus next minute into a solo and, and it's not really going to work, is yeah. it? Yeah. So, I was going to say the same thing about click. Yes. Well. Oh, if there's click. Ba work. Balancing yourself and then click yeah. and then all your other melodic instruments after that. Well, you don't want the drums above the click. You need to no. hear the click. So... You go, yeah. So yeah, that, that's, right. that's with in ears, and you know, obviously with um, live wedges, if you're not using MD and uh, yeah. click and all that, but we'll say it in case 
people aren't sure. MD is musical Music director. director. Yeah. And it's the person on stage who has a microphone who doesn't sing or anything, but they tell the band where to go. Yeah. Doesn't go to the front of house. The audience never hear them, but the band's yeah. getting full direction and where to go. Yeah. Do you um, play in bands that have yeah, MD? Yeah. So a lot, a lot of bands that I play in, there's an MD, like one of the guys, yeah. uh, bands that I play in town regularly with. Um, the singer, who the lead singer and all that, he's actually got a little foot oh, switch. Yeah, his it, setup's cool. At, he's at, got two mics. No, one mic. One mic. But it's an A B switch down in his okay, foot. Okay, I was looking at someone else. So when he <laughs> clicks, when he clicks the button, it it bypasses front of house, doesn't go out the front, and all we can hear is what he's he saying. Goes to the band. He goes to the band. Yeah. Has he messed up? He, he, we have a few. T- well, it, you know what's really awkward yeah. is when he asks us a question over the mic, and then we answer it through our vocal mics that go to the front of house. <laughs> That's very awkward. So we've had to learn. Not to respond. Be careful. Just laugh and whatnot. <laughs> but yes, no, it's good. Um, yeah. The MD makes a huge difference in, in what's going on. Yeah. But uh, the other big thing, especially with using ears, is I don't know if a lot of people have seen it, especially in bigger concerts that are uh, not bigger concerts, in smaller things, I wear one ear in and one ear out. And now it's a really unbalanced mix and everything. But what they're trying to do is judge what they're getting into their in ears yeah. and the room around them. Uh, a way that we've seen around that before is they introduce uh, like pencil condensers or condenser mics. Yeah, an audience mic. An audience mic, Yeah, which you can bleed in, well bleed, uh, you can mix into your uh, in-ears and it- Just a bit. Just a bit, uh, not enough, a lot. Enough to read the crowd, basically. Yeah. But what it does is bring a, a sense of the room into your, so when you're presence. using presence in your, in your in-ears, you're not so closed off from everything. Yeah. You can feel the room with what's going on. It's great. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I, I really struggle running one ear and not the other. Yeah. I find that really hard. Yeah. But so, yeah, I much prefer to run an audience mic 100%. so you don't feel isolated. Yeah. Or whatever. Um, but, yeah, th- I mean, that's basically it. You would be looking for your instrument as priority one, yep. then moving off, and it depends what instrument you're playing, but for drums, you'd be going bass, bass next, yep. then picking your melodic instrument that yep. you can follow along with and, and your lead vocalist. Yeah, um, and then everything else is Lead vocalist mindless. above your melodic yes. as far as the mix yep. goes so you don't lose that. No, no, that's um, right. Yeah, if you can get that right, then everything becomes a lot easier for you. You 100%. can hear exactly what you need on stage. But a lot of people fall into the trap, especially with ears. They think they want to have this stereo mix, yeah. and they just start mixing that's right. everything in. Your ears are not a front of house mix. No. that That's like a rookie it, it's, mistake. It's for what you need to that's make right. your position in the band the best that you can yes. be. Yeah, it's there to make your job easier. Yeah, that's it. That's right. A- and you are going to miss things if you put everything in. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. So, I hope that helps, yeah. you know, if my student people are watching, it's exactly what I told you the other day, Yeah. okay? Um, hopefully, you guys can uh, start doing some in- investigations into the in gear. Like yep. we said, the entry's not too bad. No. Uh, we've done reviews on the channel around the actual headphones, yep. uh, both molded and the, the cheap ones as yep. well. Uh, you can get in for less than 50 bucks on a set of in yep. and what do we reckon? Like 200 bucks, 300 bucks? Uh, I think these are like really 349 or 399 yeah. something about that. Yeah. Also check your second hand for oh, yeah. Gumtree or, or heaps whatever of else. Floating around. Um, you might be able to pick up a really good deal as someone's finishing their music uh, the career or whatever. The other thing, if you're working with wireless gear that I should mention that they have to be careful with, yes. is um, because of uh, frequency bandwidth and all that in different parts of, uh, I guess, Australia, and I'm sure yeah. it's the same all around the world, um, you actually have to check that you're using the right equipment for your region. Yeah. Um, uh, you just, can get into quite a lot of trouble if just, you don't. Just search your state. Yes. And then search wireless frequency regulations. Yep. Um, and they'll give you a list of what the um, broadcast you know, you, channels are that you, you shouldn't You know who's over. one of the best ones for that? Sennheiser. Oh, yeah. Sennheiser have yep. a, like a worldwide map where you can select and what band and frequency yeah. work best for so, your area. So it is big money if you mess that up. Yeah. Um, as far as buying secondhand gear, just be really careful. Most of the current gear that you would buy today from yep. any reputable store yep. uh, won't sell you anything that's going to get you into trouble. But just be careful with your secondhand yep. gear. Guys, we'll leave it there. Thank you. Uh, hopefully this helps. Like, subscribe, tick the boxes, and we will see you next week for JB Drum Talk. We'll see you then. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.